Hello and welcome. My name is Simon Dan and I'd like to formally welcome you to my channel where there shall be regular promotion of science, well thought out reasoning and a secular way of life. I thought I'd start with something that's been getting a lot of traction recently, flat earthers. So I came across this flat earth guy on YouTube called D Marble. He could be well known, I'm not sure, but I also don't care. Now, this particular video isn't really a flat earth proof one. I'll tackle that subject as a whole in a later video, but more of an assault on basic science. He's basically trying to debunk gravity. Now, if there is one thing I cannot stand, it is trying to refute a fundamental principle of science. And in this video, along with a car crash, car crash explanation of density, D. Marble has some poignant questions which I'd like to answer for him. I'll let him kick this off. Today we're going to talk about gravity. What is it? Where does it come from? Uh, concerning gravity, if I get any response, any sort of uh, rebuttal to anything that I say concerning the Flat Earth model in any of my videos, Facebook posts, tweets, or anything from Instagram, the single word that is used the most is gravity. I'd suggest a sort of drinking game, like if uh, you go down the comment section in any of my videos or tweets or whatever, Every time somebody uses the word gravity, you have to take a shot. I would suggest that, but I don't want to be held responsible for anybody getting alcohol poisoning. So, at your own discretion, people. Just an idea. Just putting that out there. Alright, so what we've been told about gravity is that when an object becomes so massive that it creates its own gravitational pull. Now, when people come to me, they say that... I don't understand gravity, how it works, I don't understand science, I don't understand physics. But they're suggesting that they understand science so much, yet they don't seem to adhere to the scientific method. Now one of the most important steps in the scientific method is test through an experiment. You, you want to be able to experiment whatever you come up with as far as a scientific conclusion. Before you go off preaching something as fact, you need to be able to test it. Now. If I understand correctly, as far as an object creating so much mass that it creates its own gravitational pull, that cannot be tested in a lab. That can't be duplicated. Therefore, the whole mass creating its own gravitational pull, that falls under the category of pseudoscience, in my opinion. Correct me if I'm wrong. You are wrong. Obviously, we cannot test the gravitational pull of an object the size of Earth in a lab. He knows that, and he believes that's a checkmate already. What we can do, though, is test the effects of gravity, which we have done for hundreds of years. There's a plethora of experiments that can prove gravity is a thing. I'll be happy to demonstrate them any time. You know, another thing that we're told about gravity is that uh, the old justification. And there are still adults walking around saying, if it weren't for gravity, we'd all go flying off into space a grown adult saying that the earth is flat and covered by a glass bowl that has water outside it is fine. Seriously, people believe this. And if you sit down and think about it for just a couple of minutes, you'll realize it's one of the most ridiculous things that you can say. As I said, a flat earth sounds completely plausible. Now, another thing that gravity is supposedly responsible for here on earth is holding vast amounts of water to the bottom of a spinning ball. Once again, gravity is supposedly responsible for holding trillions of pounds of water to the bottom of a spinning ball. People walk around believing this, they don't really give it a whole lot of thought, but you and I both know what happens when a ball is spun that has water on it or or attached to it okay this is one of the most ridiculous examples i've ever seen the gravitational pull of the earth is much stronger than the gravitational pull of a ball of course the water will not stick to a ball if it's being done here on earth do it on the space station though where the effect of earth's gravity is much weaker and it works quite well just saying and I'd have to ask a question. How is it that gravity is so strong that it can hold trillions of pounds of water to the underside of a ball, yet it's so weak that it can't pull a butterfly downward? 
okay because we're told that gravity from all all points on the planet's surface is pulling everything towards the center uh, including water and this causes water to curve although again with the scientific method and experimentation I don't believe that anyone's actually had the time or the resources to link me to the video wherein they caused the oceans to bend into a sphere that's never happened I don't believe it's ever happened and if someone can prove to me that there was an experiment conducted where the oceans were curved into a ball please link it to me so I can check it out again there is no experiment that we can do to show this unless we had an object with more mass than the earth available that's far enough away plus a massive amount of water to chuck on it there are four fundamental forces of nature strong nuclear electromagnetic weak nuclear and gravity gravity is by far the weakest of these four I mean look I can pick up this pen here with very little effort despite a massive earth beneath me but that doesn't mean that it isn't there I've simply just applied a force to that pen which is greater than gravity because of the huge mass of earth we feel gravity's influence, yes, and that holds us and everything else to the planet's surface, as long as there isn't a force countering that. A butterfly flaps its wings, which creates an upward thrust because of air resistance. That force is enough to overcome gravity. As soon as a butterfly stops flapping its wings, gravity will win out again and it will fall. The ocean experiences no lifting force, so gravity keeps all of the water on the planet, and as a liquid, water is free-flowing, and it simply conforms to the natural curvature of the Earth. And the funny thing is that people pretend to understand gravity so much. I do. Astrophysics. Let's look into what that means exactly. Astrophysics is the branch of astronomy concerned with the physical nature of stars and other celestial bodies and the application of the laws and theories of physics to the interpretation of astronomical observations. I cannot believe he's read out the definition of astrophysics and plucked one word out to discredit the whole science. A word that in a scientific context means something completely different to what he thinks. Let's have a quick look at the definition of a flat earther. So you can see, not even counting definition 2, definition 1 states it's just an idea. Even the lay term of theory is an upgrade on an idea. Okay, also this goofball went on to some show and he drops a microphone as if that proves gravity. Well, we'll get to that later. Now, Newton. Now, I know you're not going to start on Isaac D. Came up with this idea. After an apple fell on his head, he's sitting next to a tree. Apple falls on his head, and this guy gets a brilliant idea, says. We're just going to say that there's this force pulling everything downward. Not really accounting for the leaves that were still on the tree. But we'll, we'll move on from there. Okay, he did. But I will say the Apple story isn't true. He made it up in an interview in his 60s as a way to discredit Robert Hooke's input on putting the idea of gravity in his head. It wasn't until 10 years later he came up with universal gravitation. Now you may wonder why this man isn't a university physics lecturer. I mean the following here is an excellent example as to why. Now personally I wish that someone would have been around to explain buoyancy and molecular density to this guy. Okay, Buoyancy, the medium through which objects rise and fall through water. Density, the medium through which objects rise and fall through the air. Okay, if you take your phone and you accidentally drop that phone in water because the phone is more dense on a molecular level that phone drops to the floor of that body of water whether it's a pool, lake, whatever but also with that phone on the inside there are going to be bubbles inside that phone those oxygen bubbles are going to come from the phone they're going to re release themselves and they're going to float back up through the surface up to the surface of the water because oxygen is less dense than the water that surrounds it okay that's that's buoyancy right there okay now the same thing works as far as density now out in the air I pull my keys out I drop my keys my keys are more dense than the oxygen I think he 
genuinely believes that the air is made up completely of oxygen. And he wants us to listen to him about scientific concepts. That surrounds my keys, so the keys drop. All right, that's how that works. This balloon here, because it's got helium inside it, helium on a molecular level is less dense than oxygen. So when the balloon is released, the, uh, the oxygen surrounding it is more dense, the helium is less dense, so the balloon floats. Is it defying gravity? I don't think anyone's ever actually looked at a helium balloon and said, oh my god, that balloon's defying gravity. Nothing defies gravity. Gravity always has an influence on an object, but in, his, in this case he point, his point is well made. The helium is less dense than air, so the balloon floats. Yes, density and buoyancy are real concepts, but it certainly does not explain the effect that science calls gravity. Doesn't happen, because it wouldn't make any sense for someone to say such a thing. You know, the, the way that this goes, it's like, look at a hot air balloon, okay? Hot air balloon. The fire goes into the balloon. Now the balloon works as a barrier from the outside. The oxygen on the outside of the balloon becomes different from the oxygen on the inside of the hot air balloon because the fire goes inside the balloon, superheats up the oxygen on the inside, causes those oxygen molecules to expand to a point to where they are less dense than the oxygen on the outside of the balloon, and that causes that hot air balloon to float. That's how that works. So, again, you've never looked at a hot air balloon and said, oh my God, that balloon is defying gravity. Nobody says that. Because deep down, we all know that's not what it is, okay? You're saying that a 30-pound weight isn't a 30-pound weight without gravity? That's exactly what I'm saying, because the equation for weight is mass times the gravitational constant, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. That doesn't make any sense. But I just showed how it does. Another thing that people like to point to is that, that experiment supposedly in a vacuum where the guy got up to a, a high point in this lab drops a feather and a bowling ball and it would seem that the feather and the bowling ball hit the bottom at the same time and people will use that as justification to say yep gravity boom there it is well it does show objects falling to earth but let me ask you a question what percentage of the Earth's surface is a vacuum? Well, none of it, but what's your point? Nice round number. Remember earlier when I said I'd get back around to addressing Neil and his famous mic drop to prove gravity? I need you to pay especially close attention to this part because it took me like an hour and a half to find this feather. And by the way, this is called gravity. No, Neil. That's called density. Ha! <laughs> he has literally proven gravity by doing this. The clip before in the vacuum showed the feather and bowling ball fall at exactly the same rate in a vacuum, a rate set by the mass of the Earth. With no air inside, it couldn't influence the feather. Old D Marble has dropped it in air. Obviously, the bowling ball hits the ground first, but that is because of air resistance, which slows the feather's rate of fall, much how a parachute sh slows a skydiver. You couldn't have proven gravity better. Of course, I'll be more than happy to accept queries on any of my answers, so please leave your questions in the comment sections below if you have any. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I have been Simon Dan and I'll see you next time.